In today's video, which memory card to choose for the brand new Sony Alpha 7 II or Sony Alpha 7 CR respectively. So stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, I have to hurry up a bit because both samples are going to be selected in half an hour, so no time to waste. Let's start with a small problem I encountered during testing. That's the Sony Alpha 7 C2. The camera seems to have massive compatibility issues with UHS-2 memory cards. So that's the camera will begin and why I'm pretty sure it's the camera all cards that make problems in the 7.2 are running absolutely fine in the 7CR. Both cameras are equipped with the final firmware 1.0. So that's probably the version you will get if you're one of the first buyers or going to buy an Alpha 7C2. But yeah, enough introduction. Let's go deeper into the problem. And if you want to buy a Sony Alpha 7CR, you can skip that part and yeah, skip a bit forward to the section for the 7CR. Okay, some basics for the Sony Alpha 7 C2. The camera is capable of shooting a little bit more than 10 frames per second, which sounds like this. So pretty amazing. With one caveat, you can only shoot we have more than 10 frames per second if you're using compressed RAW files. If you're using uncompressed or lossless compression, I just switch to compress, uh, uncompressed RAW. You can hear it's a bit slower. So, and now talking about compatibility issues with certain memory cards. There are too many cards affected to discuss them all in this video. If you want to check out all results, have a look at the link in the video description. So you can find all results for the Sony Alpha 7 C2. But three of the most Popular cards affected Sony's very own Tough G series, the Kingston Canvas React Plus, as well as the Alexa 2000X in the new V90 variant. The problem for me in this video is these cards are sometimes working okay or with the expected speed, and in the next moment they are really slow, like in the UHS-1 fallback mode. So maybe they're going to work, maybe not. So let's test it with the Alexa 2000X V90 series. Put it in the Sony Alpha 7.2. And as I always do for testing, format the card in the camera. So we have a yeah, nice level playing field. And let's check the speed. So we're in the image buffer, that's fine. And yeah, this time it seems like it's working quite fine with the Sony Alpha 7 C2. So that's the speed you can expect with an UHS-2 memory card. But at the next moment it could be like one frame, one and a half frames per second instead. So be aware that those cards let's say work in 30 to 40 percent of the time but in the rest it can be really really slow. Three cards didn't even thinking about making problems during our tests coming from ProGrade, the new Cobalt series, PNY and Next Storage. Those three cards are working fine all the time we tested it in the Sony Alpha 7 C2. So I will pick the Next Storage just as an example and as I did before, I will format the card in camera. So it's all leveled again and doing the same test with uncompressed raw images. And you can hear my speed. We are in the image buffer. Now the image buffer is filled up and you can also reach full speed. So that what you can expect with a good UHS-2 V90 class SD memory card. But let's say you are more on the budget, maybe not taking, yeah, continuous shooting too often or just in compressed wall, the trials are much, much smaller. A good price performance recommendation is the Sabre and V60 series. So put that card in the camera as well. Format the card, just take a second. And now we are good to go. So. Image buffer, same speed or full speed if you want. 
Now we are out of the image buffer and maybe you can hear the difference. It's slightly slower, like three-ish frames per second, but not really, really slow. And as mentioned before, that's completely uncompressed raw. So if you're shooting compressed raw or lossless compressed raw, you can keep the speed a little bit higher than that. So that's absolutely fine and the Rocket V60 card is much less expensive compared to premium UHS-2 memory cards. It's just V60 but it's totally fine for the Sony Alpha 7C2, at least for yeah, most video modes. Okay, memory cards for the Sony Alpha 7C are. The camera can shoot with up to 10 frames per second, which is quite an impressive speed for such a high resolution camera. And after the image buffer is filled, you can still reach, well, let's say, three, four images per second. So that's quite a well or great performance, especially for just SD memory cards. But the caveat, it's only capable of doing so as the Sony Alpha 7 C2 as well with compressed raw images. If you switch to uncompressed or lossless compressed raw, which is new in the Alpha 7 CR and 7 C2, the speed is reduced as well. And now we have 60 megapixels uncompressed, so it's much, much slower. Fortunately, the camera had no compatibility issues during our tests. So you can pick, yeah, most better UHS-2 V90 cards if you want. Okay, some good cards you can choose. The Next Torage V90 series, Sony's own Tough G or the Kingston Canvas React Plus. And if you're more on the budget side, you can choose the, can the Sabre and Rocket V60 series. But be prepared, the files are quite huge in the Sony Alpha 7 CR. So better buy a faster card, especially also readout speed is really important. And as for UHS-1 SD memory cards, yes, technically they are working in the camera, absolutely fine. But it's not really a pleasant experience, so do yourself a favor and use UHS-2 V60 uh, V90 memory cards. So thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. And if you haven't done already, please consider subscribing for the channel.